In this tribute video, we honor nine American legends who have passed away today and in recent days. Welcome back to Movie Newscast. These remarkable individuals made lasting contributions to their fields, and we sadly say goodbye to them. Our heartfelt condolences go out to their families and fans. As we remember their legacies, we invite you to show your support by giving this video a thumbs up if their lives or work have touched you in any way. Your gesture is a sign of respect and remembrance. Sheldon Pinchuk dies, producer of Reality Bites, Any Day Now, and numerous TV movies was 84. Sheldon Pinchuk, partner in the Finnegan Pinchuk Company, which produced more than 40 TV movies during the genre's 1980s-90s heyday, as well as TV series Any Day Now and Northern Exposure, and features Reality Bites and The Fabulous Baker Boys, died August 28 of Parkinson's disease at his home in Calabasas. He was 84. After getting a bachelor's and law degrees from UCLA, Pinchuk began his career as a business affairs executive at NBC. While working there, he earned an additional degree from UCLA's film school and sagged into a programming role. Stints at David Dortort's company and as head of development at Warner Brothers followed before Pinchuk made another Hollywood career shift, becoming an agent at CAA. There, he represented the husband and wife producing team of William and Patricia Finnegan. Based on his lifelong love of aviation, Pinchuk pitched them an idea that became his first TV movie, the 1984 Flight 90, Disaster on the Potomac, and the trio launched a producing partnership that flourished for more than two decades. Pinchuk is survived by Barbara, his wife of 57 years, his three children, including TV executive Julie McNamara, four grandchildren and a slew of friends and former colleagues, who remember him as a kind and graceful man known for his great wit, intelligence, and integrity. The funeral service will be held at Mita Sinai Memorial Park, Hollywood Hills, September 8 at 11 o'clock. In lieu of flowers, donations can be made to the John and Julie McNamara Fund for Leukemia Research at City of Hope at cityofhope.org slash Sheldon. Wayne Graham the legendary college baseball coach who turned Rice University into a national power, culminating with the 2003 National Championship, and who briefly played under Hall of Fame manager Casey Stengel, passed away at his home in Austin on Tuesday night while surrounded by his family. He was 88 years old. After winning five junior college national titles at San Jacinto College in Houston, Graham led the Owls to seven College World Series appearances, highlighted by a national championship in 2003, the first in any sport in Rice's history. Along the way, he coached future Major League All-Stars Andy Pettit, Roger Clemens, Lance Berkman, and Anthony Rendon, among others. To me, he belongs in the conversation with Rod Dodeau, Skip Bertman, and Audie Garrido, as the top four college coaches in the history of the sport to date, said Berkman, who was the 1997 National College Player of the Year at Rice and a first-round pick of the Astros. Rice, which had never qualified for the NCAA tournament, hired Graham in 1992 and went on a historic 27-year run. The Owls made 23 consecutive NCAA appearances from 1995 to 2017, winning 20 consecutive regular season or conference tournament titles in the Southwest Conference, Western Athletic Conference, and Conference USA. There's no question there was a sense of accomplishment to do that at the Division I level that was always on his list, said former big league infielder Paul Janish who started at shortstop on the 2003 team and later coached under Graham at Rice. Doing it at a place like Rice, there's an element of it that speaks volumes, too. Being able to do it at an academic, expensive private school, and the enrollment was 4,000 kids that gets overlooked. Arguably the greatest Aggie football player of all time and a member of the Ring of Honor, Charlie Johnson, passed away at the age of 85 on Tuesday, September 3. 
Johnson, a 1970 inductee into the U.S. Bank slash NM State Athletics Hall of Fame, led NM State during its greatest two-year stretch in program history, as he was instrumental in guiding the Aggies to 19 wins across two seasons. This stretch included back-to-back -back wins in the Sun Bowl, where he was named the game's MVP in both 1959 and 1960. Johnson remains the only player in Sun Bowl history to win the MVP in consecutive seasons. Johnson, who donned no 33, is also one of only two players at NM State to have his jersey retired. In his first season with the Aggies, the native of Big Spring, Texas, finished the year as the NCAA's leader in touchdown passes with 18, a mark that was five better than any other quarterback in the country. Across his career with the Aggies, Johnson completed 214 passes for 2,960 total yards and threw 31 touchdowns while maintaining a 53.8 completion percentage. Johnson is also a member of the Texas Sports Hall of Fame, inducted in 2010, and the New Mexico Sports Hall of Fame, inducted in 2008. Johnson was also a part of NMSU's Army ROTC and would later be called into active duty in 1967. He would later work for NASA as a second lieutenant in the United States Army Reserve for two years while still playing for the Cardinals. Johnson was a longtime supporter of Aggie Athletics and will also be remembered for his unwavering kindness and commitment and dedication to serving others. Jackie Windsor, artist whose labor-intensive sculptures inspire mystery and awe, dies at 82. Jackie Windsor, a sculptor whose painstakingly crafted pieces made of bricks, wood, copper, and cement feel like riddles that are impossible to unravel, has died at 82. Her sisters, Maxine Holmberg and Gloria Christie, and her extended family confirmed her death on Tuesday, saying that she died of a stroke. Windsor rose to fame in New York alongside the minimalists during the 1970s. Her art, with its repetitive forms and the challenging processes used to craft them, even seemed at times to resemble the finest works of that movement. Windsor had studied painting, and this made her transition to sculpture seem unlikely. But certain works drew comparisons between the two mediums. Bound Square, 1972, is a square-shaped piece of wood whose corners are wrapped in twine. The sculpture, at more than six feet tall, looks like a frame that is missing the human-sized painting meant to be held within. By her own admission, Windsor was very fussy. She concerned herself with the details of her sculptures, slaving over every eighth of an inch. She worried in advance how they would all turn out and tried to envision what viewers might see when they gazed at one. She seemed to delight in the fact that viewers could not gaze into her pieces, viewing them as a parallel in that way for people themselves. Your inner reflection is more elusive, she once said. Kevin Sullivan dies. Pro Wrestling's Prince of Darkness, who feuded with Hulk Hogan, was 74. Kevin Sullivan, a pro wrestler who built a persona and considerable fame in the 1980s and 90s as a devilish villain in kiss-like makeup who battled good guys including Hulk Hogan and Dusty Rhodes, has died. He was 74. His death was announced today by World Wrestling Entertainment. No details were provided, but Sullivan had been in ill health in recent months. Debbie Vivini is saddened to learn Kevin Sullivan has passed away at age 74, the organization statement reads. A unique and influential figure in sports entertainment history, Sullivan found success both in the ring and behind the scenes with his penchant for far-out ideas that pushed creative boundaries. The statement continues, as a villain, Sullivan was a major rival for the ring's most legendary heroes, including Dusty Rhodes, Hulk Hogan, and the Road Warriors. He specialized in leading dangerous factions, which included his wicked Army of Darkness, Collegiate Bullies the Varsity Club, and the Wild Dungeon of Doom, which introduced Big Show to the wrestling world. The one-time Taskmaster also became a creative force behind the scenes for Dovi C. Dali. 
In May of this year, a GoFundMe page was set up for Sullivan who, according to the page, was facing a critical medical emergency and financial crisis, following an accident he suffered while in Florida for autograph signings. He reportedly underwent surgery and suffered complications, including sepsis and encephalitis. Information on survivors was not immediately available. Jack Carlson dies. Australia's succulent Chinese meal guy was 82. Jack Carlson, whose iconic arrest video while eating a succulent Chinese meal turned him into a meme, has died. He was 82. Carlson was reported by The Guardian to have died surrounded by family Wednesday. He walked a full and colorful path, and despite the troubles thrown at him, he lived by his motto, to keep on laughing, his family said in statement. Carlson became an icon years after the arrest video that came outside a Chinese restaurant in Brisbane. In the video he bellowed, this is democracy manifest, as he was being arrested by police and pushed into a police car. He then questioned loudly, what is the charge? Eating a meal? A succulent Chinese meal, which immediately gained meme status. The arrest took place in 1982 but the video only emerged in 2009 after it was uploaded to the internet. Carlson was reported by The Guardian to have been a small-time crook and serial prison escaper who had many aliases. The documentary on his life, The Man Who Ate a Succulent Chinese Meal, in which he revisits the restaurant, is set for release in March 2025. In an interview with The Guardian recently, director Heath Davis described Carlson as the last Australian larrikin. All Trincham Football Club are saddened to hear of the death of Clive Freeman, our player of the season in 1992-93. He is of course immediately memorable for that goal, probably the most famous goal ever scored by an All Trincham player. The strike came in stoppage time in the FA Cup first round replay against League Two side Chester City, securing a 2-0 win for the Robins in a game that was televised on BBC TV's Sports Night program. In doing so, Clive won the BBC Goal of the Month award for November 1992 and ended up third in the Goal of the Season competition behind Dalian Atkinson's strike for Aston Villa in the inaugural season of the Premier League. Clive joined us from Swansea City, signed by manager Jerry Quinn, and was played at left-back for his sole season with us, ending up as leading scorer with nine goals. Many of his efforts were shots from distance and bore a marked similarity to his most famous goal, commemorated with the Freeman Square on the pitch at the J. Davidson Stadium. He joined Doncaster Rovers after his spell with the Robins and ended up in management at Gisley, Buxton, Osset Town, and Goole. George Clooney's wife, Amal Clooney, joined him for the premiere of his latest film, but as she departed Venice, her hair was closely scrutinized, with fans commenting on its abundance. The renowned human rights lawyer joined George at the Venice International Film Festival for the premiere of his film, Wolves. After their time in this city concluded, she made a stylish exit in a striking tangerine jumpsuit. The sophisticated sleeveless outfit boasted wide leg pants, a mock neck collar, and a sash that draped elegantly down her back to her thighs. The 46-year-old completed her vibrant look with silver strappy sandals and a white Prada handbag. George opted for a navy polo shirt paired with gray pants and loafers. Both he and Amal Clooney sported matching dark sunglasses as they boarded a gondola to depart Venice. Amal's voluminous hair styled in loose waves sparked quite a bit of discussion online. One fan speculated, does she have a wig on? Another wondered if Amal might consider a different look, Emil needs to cut her hair shorter. Meanwhile, some admired her, she's beautiful and smart. However, not everyone agreed, as someone remarked, glamorous, she looks totally disheveled, unattractive. Others were more direct, with one saying, too much hair. Another individual added, that's a wig and not a good one. One fan humorously observed, she is looking a little wild, 
while an online user praised her style. That's a good one. Orange jumpsuit suits her fine, and's that hair, so glamorous. This tangerine jumpsuit is just the latest in a series of eye-catching outfits Amal has showcased during the Venice Film Festival. On August 31, 2024, Amal wore a vibrant yellow mini-dress with a lettuce hem, paired with a large sun hat. She completed the look with beige strappy heels and oversized sunglasses. On the evening of the same day, Amal donned a custom backed mag gown for a private Cartier event at the film festival. The mermaid style dress drew inspiration from the designer's Resort 2023 collection. Amal, shining in George Clooney's arms, dazzled in the dress named Lightning Storm, which featured shimmering fringe and hues of silver, white, aqua, and lavender. Amal has consistently dazzled on the red carpet alongside her husband. George has humorously mentioned feeling embarrassed about his own attire, noting that he often wears the same outfit repeatedly, while Amal showcases a series of glamorous looks. Another magnificent piece of apparel George's wife has won was the Versus Butter Yellow Lace Gown. As we previously reported, Amal stunned at the Venice Film Festival in a sleeveless Versus gown featuring intricate lace detailing. It showcased a scooped low back and delicate thin straps, adding to its elegant design. The apparel also accentuated her waist and flowed into a dramatic ruffled skirt with a short train. Amal styled her voluminous hair in loose waves, parted to the side, and accessorized with elegant pearl drop earrings. She complimented her look with a chic Judith Lieber clutch and aquasura heels. Her face glowed with makeup that featured soft blush and sparkling eyeshadow. Embracing George, 63, the couple beamed at each other, their eyes locked in a loving gaze as they posed for photos at the event. George, who looked dapper, opted for a timeless black suit and bowdy. Amal's hair and beauty attracted loads of comments online. One person said, Amal's hair is stunning, while another user commented, skinny, but has the thickest hair in the world. However, more users chimed in with critiques, such as who did the hair extensions? Horrible hairdresser. Another individual noted that Amal looked different with lighter hair, a comment a fan concurred with, don't think it suits her at all. Her natural dark hair is more stunning in my opinion. At the festival, the couple also enjoyed time with Brad Pitt and his girlfriend, Insti Rahman, first at dinner and later on the red carpet for the premiere of Wolves, where they all posed together. From her red carpet looks to outfits she has won to parties, it is evident that Amal's fashion sense has often attracted fans' attention with many praising her for setting trends. Selva Alamin, an acclaimed Venezuelan actress and theater director, passed away on September 3, 2024. Born on April 12, 1948, in Caracas, Venezuela, Alamin made significant contributions to Latin American theater and television over her distinguished career. Alamin was best known for her roles in Venezuelan soap operas, such as Luz Maria and Cassandra, where she showcased her versatile acting skills and became a beloved figure in the Latin American entertainment industry. Her performances were celebrated for their depth and authenticity, earning her numerous awards and accolades. In addition to her television work, Alamin had a profound impact on the Venezuelan theater scene. She was a respected director and an advocate for the arts, using her platform to support emerging talent and promote cultural initiatives. A lemon's death marks the end of an era for many fans and colleagues who admired her dedication to her craft and her contributions to Latin American culture. Her legacy will be remembered through her extensive body of work and the impact she had on the entertainment industry in Venezuela and beyond. Bernie Meralt, a notable Canadian comic book artist and writer, passed away on September 4, 2024, at the age of 63. Meralt was well known for his work in the comic book industry, particularly for his contributions to the alternative and independent comic scene. Born in Montreal, Quebec, Meralt's career began in the early 1980s. 
He gained recognition for his unique artistic style and storytelling approach. He is perhaps best known for his work on the comic book series The Jam, which showcased his distinctive blend of humor, satire, and social commentary. Throughout his career, Merald worked with various publishers, including Vortex Comics and Image Comics, and collaborated with other prominent artists and writers. His contributions extended beyond just his own work. He was influential in the development of the independent comic scene in Canada. Miralt's legacy is marked by his innovative approach to comic book art and storytelling, leaving a lasting impact on both his peers and readers. His passing is a significant loss to the comic book community, where he will be remembered for his creativity, vision, and dedication to the art form. Today, we honor the lives and legacies of those who have left us. With gratitude and respect, we remember the profound impact they made and cherish the memories they left behind. May they find eternal peace, and may their contributions continue to guide us. We remember Sheldon Pinchuk, Wayne Graham, Charlie Johnson, Jackie Windsor, Kevin Sullivan, Jack Carlson, Clive Freeman, Selva Alleman, and Bernie Myralt. May they rest in peace, and may God bring comfort to their families.